Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our new and improved channel that we're still building on. It's almost the end of 2022, and there's not as many movies right now. So we said, hey, why don't we do a year in review? So this is our very informal, just our personal feelings, um, going around naming, mm, I'm going to say this very casually, our top five movies of 2022, but the exact numbers are not for some of us are not gelled. I haven't asked everybody. Oh yeah, I've, I definitely have. We have uh, honorable mentions. I I, yeah. I chose five, but all of my honorable mentions can all be on this right. list. Right. So just the movies we like the most. So yeah. you can't see every single movie and every movie that you do see, you may not like. So we're just going to talk about the ones we did like. So obviously you got me, Constance. We have Natalia. Hello. I'm still jet lag. <laughs> and our beloved Kyle. So. Hello. Good to be back again. Also, by the way, I I haven't seen a lot of the like awards uh, forward films this year so far. I've seen some, um, and I think a couple of them are on my list. But um, anyway, so that's just saying that I haven't seen every movie this year. So um, and this also, is my Anthony is not here. Top five and <laughs> yes, if you want to see all the Oscar us. contenders, go to Oscar Film uh, Fancast or Film Forecast with Anthony and Jack on their channel and you can get all your Oscar glory there. <laughs> this is just what our little brains like. Yes. Yes. Our simple little brains. <laughs> yes. My simple little brain. I'll speak for myself. Yeah. But um, yes, anyway, my um, number five pick is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And um, this was easily going to go into my top five, I felt. Um, until I started to like think about like the rest of the films that came out this year. And I realized there's a, a lot more than I, I remember that there were. So that's why it's actually at like the bottom of my number five, because I would, as much as I would like to put it up higher, um, there were actually um, other movies that I liked. Um, so anyway, I, uh, what I loved about Wakanda forever is um, obviously like, the fact that it was, you know, such a beautiful tribute to Chadwick Boseman um, and just like his his legacy, um, you know, not only within the MCU, but like you also felt, um, I mean, like with all the press and everything that came out during the film, um, you know, Ryan Coogler, the director and the rest of the cast were very transparent about, you know, the process of making the film during that like real life grieving process in the way that they incorporated that into the movie um it, it gave it like a very authentic quality to it um while also telling like this big blockbuster narrative story and also introducing um you know characters like Namor uh who I love um you know alone I could I'm sorry I don't know if you can hear there's that just loud happened sirens here, outside. so don't feel bad yeah. okay right before I hit record um, <laughs> Anyways, yes, I love Namor, and I could, you know, go on, go on a whole tangent about that character, um, you know, just in general. But um, yeah, I just thought it was a beautiful film, and um, I would say probably this the I would say it is the strongest installment of the MCU's Phase Four. Um, so yeah, I think I don't think it that's very its... hard. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't th think I'm super, as harsh as a lot of other people are on, yeah, on no, the same. MCU, but um, yeah, I think Black Panther Wakanda Forever was easily the best part of this last phase. And um, I think it like easily deserves a spot in my top five. So that's my number five pick. That's an excellent pick. And, you know, I, I agree with you because it had the most to live up to because of the tragedy. So it had a lot going against it. The odds were not in its favor. So the fact that they were able to stick the landing at all, you know, does deserve some props. So they could have butched it like they did some other things, but we're not here to poo-poo. We're not talking things. about that. We're talking about yeah. what we liked. Yes, exactly. So we're not going to, you know, go on a tangent here. All right. Currently, like if I'm, if I'm going to rank them, it's hard. I don't like numbers. I like tiers so much more. <laughs> But if you wanted me to put them in numeric order, my number five right now is where the crawdads sing. And I'll tell you why. I, I went into it just because there was all this, oh, it's a best-selling book. And oh my God, I was like, okay. A certain sector of people that I normally don't converse with, like people here, 
are into this thing. I'm like, all right, well, maybe I should broaden my horizons and see something that I normally wouldn't go and watch. And I was actually blown away by that movie. So the reason I put it in my top five is if Hollywood is truly afraid of, you know, theater expo- expo- yeah, exhibition going away. Exhibitions. Yes. If they're, they need to not be afraid to make smaller movies like this. Like, yes, it's a known IP because it's a best-selling book, but it's not a franchise the way other things are franchised. At least not yet. Hopefully it'll stay this way. Um, it's a very good self-contained story. It has a nice narrative, nice flow. And it's not just one thing. It's got a couple things going on. So it was just refreshing to take a break from Marvel and Star Wars and Pixar and all, all these other things. I didn't mean to just name Disney things. Other things too, like, <laughs> it's you know, hard not to Transformers <laughs> and Fast and Furious. Like, it's nothing like, it was just like, oh, it's just a movie that's just a movie. It's just about people. They're not super powered. Nothing supernatural is happening. It's just, you know, very grounded. It was just, you know, a refreshment really is what it was. So that's my number five. Cause I think it's good to have different types of movies in your arsenal like oh yeah let's support a little bit of everything right for sure i i also love um the lead actress in that film i haven't seen it but i i forget her name da- daisy something daisy um, <sighs> it's like so, three I names i don't know it's three names isn't we're it? sorry I think daisy, it's three names. But, um, daisy we know you we love you <laughs> but also just like a quick little plug i don't know if anybody's um seen normal people on hulu but um she's also the lead in that series and it's it's just, i mean it's very hard to watch at times but it's like a phenomenal series so um anyway that's also a great pick i've heard great things about that film i haven't seen edgar it. jones i got my edgar, I got my, jones. Um, edgar jones. letterbox yes. open edgar jones there we go edgar jones. there you go daisy <laughs> there you go daisy um right. i haven't seen it hannah has seen it and my dad saw it because I think he read the book and he was like, we got to watch this movie. And I, I, I was not home during that. But anyway, my um, number five is once you look at my list and see my whole list, um, it is going to very much be like Constance has just said about a, just a bunch of different movies for what I'm feeling. Um, and this number five, I feel like is kind of surprising a little bit. This is the one that I texted you about, which is The Black Phone. Ooh. Um, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, um, this was a bit surprise to me, um, even just like watching it because Hannah and I, we just saw it um, at one night and we were like, just to watch something. Um, and and so we did and we were really surprised. And this, this I think is like the biggest thing for Hannah because now watching that movie, she's like a huge Ethan Hawke fan. Um, took her long enough, but like, congratulations, <laughs> she's finally joined the fold. Um, but I loved that little movie so much. Um, it's based off a short story, um, a nice, quick little read of a thriller kind of thing, um, supernatural elements. Um, I just, there was something about this movie, I don't really know if I can pinpoint it, but there was just something so fun, frightening, and just like, necessary about it I don't know I don't I don't know where the kind of necessity of it comes from but I think it it is that part of having a bunch of little movies and other kinds of different types of film in your arsenal and this one I felt like I was looking at all the list of all the movies that had come out and this one I'd really gravitated towards when I saw that title again and it just I loved it and Ethan Hawke was just so much fun with all of his little masks and the kid was great and the sister the little sister she the was sister she was my favorite she was my movie. favorite she was so fun she was so funny and in all of the really serious times she was just right there completely where she had to be um and when she was like praying to god <laughs> she was like she was like if you keep this up I'm never talking to you again or something like that. And she was like threatening God. I was like, that's my girl. She was so funny. It's like, I was like, who's this little girl? She's going to be a star. She, she is. She has to be. She, she has to be. She has to be. Um, also, fun fact, the guy that plays the father of those two kids, um, he, this is such like a niche thing, but I'm making another Hannibal reference. He was um, in Hannibal as 
literally like my favorite murder of the week um as peter bernadoni in um oh. suzakana season two episode six or seven but i love i yeah. love that character of peter bernadoni i like that actor a lot and it was really nice to see him shift from that to that anyway it's been 10 years but that really that, nice to see him beat a really couple of kids thing. <laughs> yes um but anyway the black bone loved it to death pun not intended really great quick enjoyable fun dark spooky film that is such a good pick and you know to piggyback on that i know a lot of people who don't really watch movies but a lot of them for some reason gave that movie a chance and they loved it yeah so it's like yeah people give things a chance you might be surprised that's a lot of what my list is it's a lot of movies i'm like oh maybe and then wow so yeah yeah black phone very good black phone very agreed all right Um, gotta move to the fours now number four what's your (laughs) okay um so my number four pick is nope by jordan peele um and you know i don't have um a whole lot to say about this movie um i and i know it's kind of like divisive i know you know jordan peele definitely has his fans um and i think you know when you go to see a Jordan Peele movie. I guess at this point, you kind of like have certain expectations. And um, I mean, I don't know. I think, yeah, I know. So, and I think that's kind of why um, there is that divide in the way it was received because I think people were expecting a certain thing. And um, I think he did something different. And I I personally liked what he did. And I kind of, um, you know, just, I really appreciated like, the message or I guess like my interpretation of the message of the movie um and and I just I don't know there's something about just like like auteur filmmakers like that who are just like very artsy and who feel like like I just love how when he's like giving interviews and he's you know he kind of refuses to explain like everything which he doesn't need to in the first place it's like that's what the movie's for so um so I just really I don't know I enjoyed the movie a lot and I really um and I think you know especially you know Kiki Palmer and David uh, Kaluuya and um Angel and, and Angel I'm forgetting and his the name. director with the cool raspy voice I yeah I mean just I the performances were voice. were great and again I just thought the messaging was really um important uh to me so I thought it was again just a very entertaining. It was just entertaining all around. Um, so that is my number four pick. Nice. You shocked me when you said I don't have a lot to say. I'm like about this movie. This has like all the things to say about it. <laughs> there's a, there's a lot to say. It's like at first I'll think about it and not really know what I'm gonna say, but then I can you know go on for as long as I want to. It's just yeah. I don't want to take up a lot of time. So right. Well. We foolishly took a break in the summer we should not have because we could have done a very nice long video just about Nope because it is a think piece. It is one of those, you feel one way when you watch it, but then hours go by and then you're like, oh, you know, so it's that aftertaste kind yeah. of thing. So There's so many things to dissect about it too, you know, so. Yeah. Excellent. I That's a great choice. Natalia, do you want to go next or do you want me to go next? You. Okay. Um, My number one. Number four is The Menu. We were just talking about this before we hit record. Um, I went into this movie going, oh, I need to do this for the council. We're going to do a review. So it was like homework. And I was in a weird mood. It was exactly the movie I needed. And I had no idea that I needed that movie. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It was very cathartic. It was very fulfilling. You know, so go to this movie hungry because it will fill you up. Yes. Um, You could say, I could see why people may not like it. They might think, it's pretentious or the ending goes somewhere cuckoo. I don't care because to me, it was just so well executed that it just, for me, it delivered. So I like that it was, I don't even know how to categorize it. You know, like, oh, it's this kind of movie. I'm like, I don't know what kind of movie it is, Mm -hmm. but it's really short too. So I feel like it doesn't take a long time to make a point. It gets to the point pretty, you know, rapidly. So that's nice. Um, Yeah. So I just liked how efficient it was and took me by surprise so I had to stick it on my list so that's where I'm putting it um 
the menu is on my honorable mentions, um, but I do, it's on there. It's on a list of some sort. Right. Um, my number four, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Um, Just fangirling over Tino's Tino Huerta. Tino Huerta. Oh, he's amazing. And the importance of his character as indigenous representation, because it is, he, he's not Latin, he's indigenous. Um, and, but also as a Latin actor and doing that and everything, it just felt great. Um, but I feel like looking at my list and how, just kind of like how I feel, I think this seems like an appropriate spot for me because there it's such a massive film, not so much in terms of doing a bunch of things at once, but it's just trying to calm everything down after the personal storm that has just happened and recited over all of this. Um, and I feel like this is the kind of movie that not only do you need to sit with it, but I don't see myself rewatching it anytime soon. Um, mainly because it's just like, I don't think that I'm in the right headspace. Like, I feel like I need to, yeah, you know, it's just, I I need it to bring me back down to earth, you know? And I don't, I don't know. That's what? Beautiful. What? It's that's so beautiful. Uh -huh. watching it. No, I'm, not, I'm looking at the vegetable. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting that you say that because because um, I've only seen the movie once too. And um, after the first time I saw it, like I couldn't stop thinking about it. Like it's all I thought about um, for like days, for like the rest of the week. And I was like, I, I got to see it again. I like, I want to see it again so bad. But I like, for some reason, I never like got there you never never made myself go see it so i guess i feel the same way sort of in a way maybe think, subconsciously you know yeah i think what is funny is that i have seen it twice and i saw it so close in proximity after i'd seen it for the first time that it just it felt like i was kind of just like being mirage with a lot of emotion back to back and i was like i'm not in space mm -hmm. for this to do this again um so i'm i'm taking a break from wakanda forever for right now but yeah that's my number four that was beautiful, Natalia. Thank you. I try. <laughs> Kyle. Uh, okay, number three. My number three is everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh. I, you know, again, it goes it goes down to the performances I thought were just really excellent here across the board. Um here specifically, I think, you know, this movie this movie um was was just a surprise in so many ways um you know not only like visually but also um there was a, there was like so much action um which i wasn't i mean i you there's also an expectation right with the cast but um i just found like every every turn in this movie was surprising in a good way um and I just, again, I really liked the messaging here where it was just kind of really about, um, you know, finding happiness in like the really simple, you know, moments in life, really. Or, just, you know, just, you know, the whole idea of just kind of like cherishing what you have. And, and um, yeah, I, again, I mean, there's there's so much to say with and I like don't know how to articulate it completely but um i just think this is a beautiful film and um i really love it and i wish i uh had seen it more than once so <laughs> but it was so powerful for you to put it your number three so yeah if we were making a list of what we thought were the best films of the year i would probably put that on my number one it's like right it's so well made and it's so unexpected you know you don't know what to do with it my audience was definitely like what the fuck am i watching <laughs> There was a lot of confusion, but I think it was healthy. Yeah. Oh, just the stuff with the fanny pack alone, the yes. fight with the fanny That alone. Yes. Oh, so okay, good. So, so this good. Is the, what, yeah. yeah, this is, um. where's the cast? These, this is when I wanted to shout out names. Key. I don't want to, do you guys know how to say his name? <laughs> Short oh. round from Indiana Jones. Right. We all know him. Yes. We just don't yes. know um yeah amazing performance I loved him the most I think him mm -hmm. and I mean again the whole cast was incredible but I thought I just loved everything about his character his multiple characters I guess but yes oh my yes. god the Hollywood version the oh right. 
That was magnificent. I could do laundry with you for the rest of my life. Exactly. Exactly. Like it just so that quotable. that quote just says everything. So yes. Beautiful. I love these choices. These are good lists. We're really right. good at this, well, you guys. I'm, I'm going in the other direction. I'm not going towards high art. I'm just going to things that make my heart happy. <laughs> my number three is the unbearable weight of massive talent. <laughs> and it's just because it's pedro pascal who i love everyone loves pedro, love pedro. <laughs> and his idol <laughs> i just remembered it <laughs> i mean it's just like a the man in the title you mean yes i i love it so much sometimes you just need happiness like them sitting there going paddington's my favorite movie too like <laughs> <laughs> so similar message it's just about the little things in life it's about right. those little things that bring you joy. So this is my Marie Kondo uh, top five list. <laughs> yeah. Great way of describing it, actually. Yes. That's, that's, that's what it how is. yours is reading out. My number three is Bullet Train. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, um, I saw this with Hannah. I have a running theme, obviously. Um we both had really wanted to see it and we were just like it felt like it was going to be fun and it was and we enjoyed it thoroughly and then the second we got out of the theater we texted our parents we were like we saw this new movie bullet train we think you guys would really like it um so i i enjoy this movie mainly because of the connection that it has now with like the people in my life um because we texted our parents. We told them, we we're like, go see this movie. We think you guys really like it. And so they went, um, our parents, and they went with our neighbors. Um, and one of our neighbors, the second the snake showed on the screen, she walked up and she left. <laughs> but then she came back. But she still, she was like, no, I'm out of here. But she came yeah. back. Um, but our mom, we told her ahead of time. We were like, yeah, I don't think you're going to like this, but like dad's going to love this. And he did, and he loved it. But our mom at the end of it, um she, she we were like so what did you think and she was like you know what at first it was like really dumb but then the action just like kept going and like the action was so stupid I enjoyed it and I'm like yeah that's the movie <laughs> oh. <laughs> so all in all bullet train um is my number three I just find it to be a lot of fun like super popcorn um kind of movie and then sandy bullock shows up in the end looking like that and it's great <laughs> oh also the twins yes the, the, yes. the twins were the best character ever in that whole movie i loved them kyle you look confused i haven't seen the movie so i don't know oh. who the twins oh, are watch it oh it's, it's so, fun. so good really it's, okay yeah. because the short definition is it's speed meets kill bill it's That's speed interesting. meets <laughs> Kill Bill and like a tiny bit of acid, just like a hint. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you know how I was telling you that um somebody last night was telling me to watch the menu. They were also telling me to watch Bullet Train, and I was like, really? I've heard so many awful things about that movie. It's and then he was like, and then the way he described it, he was like, in the the same way you're describing it as Speed Meets Kill Bill. He said, he said, think of it as if like Tarantino was born in Japan. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? And he's like, just, you know what it means. Once you get out, you'll understand. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. Right. I love it. He's right. Okay. Um, my number two is, it's called Enter Galactic. It's an animated movie. Um, and it's on Netflix. And this movie, um, this movie is produced um i don't know if i could say that it's directed by but it's also written by um kid cuddy who's a uh, musician who i love who i've been a fan of for years i mean i think everybody you know within my age range i think um you know timothy chalamet is in this movie specifically that because is the one i was huge, thinking of yes specifically because he's such a huge kid cuddy fan so it's like um I think, you know, him as an artist has, like, definitely um, created this kind of, like, fan base that's really, like, kind of grown with him in a way. And I think um, 
you know, seeing him create something because it's funny. I was just talking to one of my friends about this movie and like how much I recommend it. But um, I've been following Kid Cudi on Twitter and for like the last couple of years, he's been tweeting like really cryptically about, you know, you guys, you guys can't, you guys have no idea what I'm working on right now. And he's just been like teasing, teasing mm-hmm. stuff for years, you know, and, and to finally like see what he's been working on. Um, so basically, Intergalactic is essentially like a an extended music video of um, basically an entire album that he created for the movie. Um, but there's also like a, a narrative woven through it. So it's it's an actual movie, but within the movie, um, for example, you know he he meets like his love interest and then when he comes back home you know it goes into one of his songs and then there's like um the, i think the biggest draw for this movie is that um the animation is the same animators that um did spider-man into the spider-verse i don't know so, if that's a draw I love so that. the animation is beautiful it's yes. it's gorgeous so it um when you mix that with um beautiful music i think you get a beautiful movie and um in the cast, I mean, Kid Cudi plays the main character, which again, I think just like, you know, as an artist and as somebody, you know, who likes to make things, I think that's just, it's like really inspiring to see somebody do that and to like really kind of create something that they're like really proud of and something that's like, they're obviously very passionate about. So Kid Cudi, um, like I said, Timothy Chalamet's in this movie, Laura Harrier. Um, I forget the rest of the cast, but um, it's like massive. I said, I it's massive it's um it's wonderful it's on netflix you can watch it whenever you want um like i said i can't recommend it enough um so yeah i'm so happy i was hoping that someone would either have an animated film or a streaming film on their list and here you did both in one swing way to go like yes eclectic that's what we want i was like please let's have the same five movies just in a different order i know i I knew that you guys weren't gonna have this on here just because i know (laughs) you guys um but i think you guys should check that out anyway definitely it's on my list all right my number two is definitely the second place movie for sure and if my first place movie didn't exist this year this would be number one all right so my number two is elvis I'm a sucker for biopics. Now, I'm not one of those people. I understand that there are people who hate it because it glosses over some not so good qualities of the era and of the people, but that's not what the intent was. If you know anything about Baz Luhrmann, Mm -hmm. you should have gone into this movie knowing it was not going to be a true to life, play by play. That's not the message of this movie. And I find that refreshing because how many times have we seen, especially for music artists, like, oh, they're this, they have all this talent and then they get discovered and then we have our montage of their success and then they spiral out of control and ah, like that's so boring. And a lot of people hate that Elvis is not our point of view character. I think that is brilliant. I think it's important that he stays aloof, you know, because he's so mythic and we're really watching it from this predator character who I thought was going to ruin the movie. I did think Tom Hanks's cartoonish approach was going to ruin it. But that scene where in, they're in the casino for the first time and he's wheeling and dealing at the table with the, the guys and they're all like, if you get him to stay here, your debts will be erased and blah, blah. And you, but they're cutting it with, you see images of Elvis killing himself. So you know that this is someone who's working their prize horse to death instead of taking care of them. It just really showed a light in a different way of how predatory the business is. And I was like, wow. And yes, it's Baz Luhrmann. There's a lot of stuff coming at you there's a lot of iris and spinning but that's Baz Luhrmann he is the perfect person to do an Elvis movie because they both were loud and punchy and in your face and they're all like more is more it's just you have to know what you're going into it's kind of like how people went to sausage party with their kids thinking it's an animated movie that means it's for kids (laughs) no (laughs) so you have to know what you're buying a ticket to so I don't appreciate people criticizing the movie because it's not what they thought they were gonna get because they didn't take the time to do a little bit of homework. If, they, if the movie said, this is gonna be a real adaptation and then it wasn't, then they lied to you, then be mad. But don't be mad because your expectation was not met. That is my number one pet peeve about reviews is when people go there, I'm like, you can say, why do we do all this? Why, why would the crazy time jumps and blah, blah, blah. 
you can say you don't like that, but if your reason is like, well, that's not what I'm supposed to get in one of these movies, that's just a dumb argument. So I can't handle it. But I think this movie's amazing. I never understood the appeal for Elvis, but once I saw this, I was like, I I understand. And now I find him really attractive. And I never understood. Yeah. My mom was a huge fan. She was like, oh, I had such a crush on him. And I was like, really? Well, this movie made it very clear why. <laughs> I could go on forever, but I love this movie so much. I thought it was going to be good, but I had no idea it was going to be this good. Oh my God. So that is my very clear second movie for 2022. <laughs> um, I have a lot to say, but I'll, I'll You'll hold save it for <laughs> after Natalia's <laughs> done with her number two. <laughs> my number two. I'm switching it up so then I can put my number one and number one, which is my number two is the batman um yeah um i i i i i really went back and forth on whether or not i even wanted to put this movie on here it came out so long ago um march um but i don't know there's just something so special about this kind of like ugly gritty little movie not little um it's massive the scope of this everything is just so wide you can see the whole world um but i I, there's just something that i really really liked about this movie and i don't know if it was the kind of really fun new film noir kind of aspects to it i don't know if it was it, it just felt so classical um and then we got some good old ave maria singing in an orange jumpsuit oh and colin farrell <laughs> he yes was <laughs> the he real was star so much fun no i was espanol fellas <laughs> oh he was great i think he was probably the most like transformative part um pun definitely intended because how well is that colin farrell under there i love it so much okay that's number two <laughs> nice nice yeah, I I love the Batman. That was um that movie is also in my honorable mentions list. Um I love that movie because it's um it's probably like the closest live action thing we've seen of um Batman Year One, which is my favorite, like so Batman awesome. comic yeah. story. Yeah. Um and Zoe Kravitz is amazing. I, yeah, again. Um really good take on the character and i love a kurt cobain inspired bruce way as one does let's go okay is it number is one it shall number we number yes let's go okay um no surprise here but my number mm-hmm. one is elvis by baz Luhrmann. yes um yeah i mean i i love this movie i've seen it many times um like I said earlier, like this has this top one spot hasn't changed since um, before this year when I saw it um, for like an early. Um, oh, it was an early right. screening. It was an early test screening, um, and then you know I got to give my comments at the end, and they changed a couple things, and then and then after that I saw it it's because for of you like an, for like an early fan screening. And then I saw it like twice in theaters and I've seen it a couple times on HBO Max. So, um, yeah, I love Elvis. Um, unlike Constance, I've, I've grown up um, and I don't know, I guess my mom wasn't like obsessed with Elvis. So I guess that might give you a weird relationship. But <laughs> um, and my parents had always been, that's, that's the way I think I've like um, cultivated a lot of my music taste is um I think a lot of stuff that my parents have introduced me to and Elvis was always always on our uh radio or whatever was playing around the house so um I mean I remember first grade I have there's some poster I would have to like dig through some storage to find it but it was first grade and there was a project where you ha- you had to like you, you know you had to name like your favorite artist or something and I remember it's, it was like a team up project. So I I put Elvis and then like my teammate put like Shania Twain or whatever. So I remember there was like little drawings of Elvis and Shania Twain on stage together. And I'm like, some things just never change, you know? So um, yeah, I have Elvis's like shades tattooed on my arm. So let's go. Um, I love Elvis. And um, 
you know, as much as I agree with Constance that this movie is very much not like your typical, um, you know, straightforward, tragic biopic movie. Um, it's so much more than that. It's it's so artistic. It's so um, again, like it was it was a very deliberate choice that they chose to tell the story through, um, you know, Tom Hanks character who, um, you know, I remember when I first saw this movie, I wasn't the just the initial like shock of that of you know upon seeing that and realizing that that's not the movie that you're getting um because I definitely had very um you know I had expectations for this movie then you know upon seeing it you know it tells it tells like Elvis's tragic story um you know it de it definitely gets into that towards the end especially and and the ending definitely made me cry um because it shows like real life footage and it shows real life footage of people at Elvis's funeral and like on the streets and just like you know celebrating such an icon and, and um and I just really appreciate it because there's all there's this big conversation about Elvis and his um relationship with the black community and um you know it's always been like a controversial topic and you know I think you know no matter what you feel about that I think um this movie does a very um respectful and like authentic way of portraying that um you know I've read a lot about Elvis and I've you know I've seen plenty of documentaries and everything so to me um this movie was a very authentic yet very artistic and um just entertaining version of an Elvis story and um that's why it's my number one because I just love it so much and I think it has so many great qualities and that's why I've seen it so many times and I will continue to watch it many more times. Same, same. And I agree because again, Elvis has been done a lot. This is not the definitive version. It's a version and it's like, well, how do you do it differently? So that's why I argue against the whole, why isn't he the one we're following? I'm like, but that's been done and you have other options. This is so wonderfully different, you know, it's, it's just so good. I feel like people who really don't like, I don't want to throw the whole, oh, you just don't get it. But I'm like, no, seriously, you just don't get director's intent. It's so important. If you don't know who Baz Luhrmann is, you know, then that's your fault that you went into a movie going, why is it this? It's like, <laughs> hello, did you see Moulin Rouge or Great Gatsby? I mean, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> So um, I agree. I agree with all that wholeheartedly and um, it's not that those topics aren't important, but it's been talked about, and this is just a totally different angle. I, I applaud the boldness of that. So, and I think it does. You know, it kind of it gets everything done in the process of that too. It while does. you know, while giving it that different perspective. Yeah. Um, and again, I just wanted to also add that, you know, I think this is probably one of the, um, I guess, more awards friendly movies on my list. And I don't know, I you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with Austin Butler, but in my heart, he is he is the winner of this um, you know, actor award for this year. 100%. Yes. Made me he a believer. Yes, give it to him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I agree. I agree. I liked him in Hannah Montana. <laughs> Same. I, I you never watched seen that. Elvis. We can go on for days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Elvis is great. I watched it yesterday. I was like, man, I miss Elvis. I'm going to put it on. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I love that. Now we're getting to the part where we're kind of overlapping because if you follow this channel at all, and by this, I mean our old channel, or if you follow me at all, it should not be any surprise what my number one is the Batman. I saw this movie in theaters 20 times. I seriously need help. You, yeah, because that's what healthy people you, do. You, Anthony, that's right. <laughs> I did, because it was still playing for my birthday, so I was like, oh, I got to go on my birthday. You got to go again. <laughs> I Let's love go, it. Let's go, guys. We're, We're all going. We talked about it in our review, so you can go watch that, um, but I agree with what you guys said. I, I need comics accurate Batman. Batman was my first love. I loved Batman before I loved anything else on this planet. I had a Batman birthday cake while other girls had princesses cake. I was like, no, I want Batman on my cake, you know? <laughs> Taste, so. Constance. <laughs> now, the movie is flawed. I am not blind to the fact that, yes, is it long? Yes, but what do you cut? I still don't know the answer to that question. After saying because if you cut times, something, you sacrifice. You 
good thing. So you just have to have a completely different story, but still have this style and impression on it. Uh, but I don't know what to cut, but I understand that it's not for everyone. And we don't need the Joker tea scene. That scene is stupid. I would cut that, but it's only two minutes, so it's not really saving. And it's like right. near the end. It doesn't matter. It just I was going to suggest it. that, but I was like, wait, that's that was a additional scene that was released post movie. Exactly. Oh no, I mean the one in the jail with right. Her. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. we could cut that. We this movie didn't need the Joker. I I, mm-hmm. I hate that they think oh we got to prop it up by putting that. In. No, 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 you don't. No, you don't. Joker has been over Jokered. We don't need more Joker. We're fine. Right. We it's love so Barry, nice to go somewhere no, else because you. he has such a great rogues gallery it's like yeah let's rotate some other ones in the idea of of the riddler being like the zodiac killer that is such a great idea That's so great so mm-hmm. obvious why have we not thought of that before <laughs> anyway um very good i agree that it's long i just don't know how to make it shorter without sacrificing quality and all oh, that chase scene i've never cared about car chases i always tune those out but man when that when he's just ribbing up the car oh my god hitting my g-spot like no other <laughs> i was like oh my god i understand the the attraction yeah, to the adrenaline of cars now this is amazing <laughs> so, yeah so good so good so if if the batman had come out last year like it was supposed to elvis would be the clear winner <laughs> but it got bumped so <laughs> but yes big shock the batman's my number one great choice I tell you you go mine <laughs> is the one that we've mentioned which is everything everywhere all at once um i realized looking at this everything here begins with a b um except for my number one which is an e um and then my honorable mention is my top three are e's interesting Um, very interesting interesting yeah i don't know what that means i don't know either the letter Um, of the e or it's the the, year of the e the letter of the (laughs) e the year of the e um I adore this movie. I have only seen it once, but I I love it to death. Um, and like how Kyle has art, it it's it's the kind of grandness of of life and the kind of suffocating nature of it, and trying to find those moments in there of 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 peaceful but difficult mundanity in it. And I just. I, the the bagel like who knew I would be so entertained by a, a bagel it was it was great Stephanie was amazing I think she was an absolute standout right. um she was perfect in every little part that she did the and outfits were the outfits incredible. were everything it's organic oh, <laughs> I'm gonna die she's amazing Speaking um, of Elvis, I loved her like Elvis jumpsuit that, was the, that she wore. Yes, iconic, yes, great, and with the wig, perfect. Um, but I think this this cast is is so great, and how everyone kind of plays off each other and is kind of super cautious with one another and how they're going to be because they don't want to step on anyone's toes because they don't want to be like oh this is another thing that if I bring up then they're going to worry about it and they already have too much on their plate and that kind of thing and it's just it's it's a struggling family trying to do their taxes um and that I feel like it's really it's sad that it that's kind of what it boils down to a little bit Mm -hmm. but it's just like that's kind of the point that's, of just like that's all, the log line that's the log yeah. line of it it's just like these fam- this family their taxes um they're but having a hard time they're having a hard time and like that's life babe but and the, the taxes Amen, as is life <laughs> it's unnecessarily difficult and i think the greatest part about this movie and is all of those realities and how even though they're all kind of stacked on top of each other, how I felt like kind of the best one was the one that we started off with. Because it's it's not about the kind of happy ending and all of that. It's about how the struggles that you share yourself and that you are willing to share with your family and your loved ones and how you're able to come together because of that. Not just taxes, but also being the resident gay daughter <laughs> that was right. that was i just 
and Waymond was just he was he was the emotional anchor of that whole stole your heart oh my goodness oh my goodness and again I I would do laundry with you in any dimension is he's the best that's like the Um, new you had me at hello yes exactly (laughs) exactly this I just I love this movie so much I really I need to rewatch it because I've only seen it once but I the more that I think about it especially when I was making this list just a couple of hours ago I'm just like this this needs to be the one I love it so much yeah even yeah your description of that movie just made me love it so much more what what part? Because I said about fifteen different the, things about that. Just movie. the whole thing. It was just very beautifully said. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm I think I'm really good at this. Great choice. Oh wow! Excellent These choice. Are like, These are great lists. I love our lists. We did really well, <laughs> you guys. Wait, so I know that I have honorable mentions. Kyle has honorable mentions. Constance, do you have honorable mentions? I mean, I like lots of movies, but you guys, you guys go first. <laughs> um, Kyle, you can say yours, and then if we have anything overlap, we can talk about. It, and if not, then the Northman um, is another movie that that I kind of just want to talk about really quick. I, um, I mean, uh, this is this one is not so much um, because it really has any like you know deep messaging or there it's not really anything about that it is more of just like the spectacle of seeing this this poor guy just like go through like the worst shit you can possibly think about um and just see him like fight for his life essentially and like fight for his like name back um and i and what's interesting which i didn't know until after i saw this movie that um this is actually based on the character that initially inspired the character of hamlet that shakespeare eventually wrote about so um so yeah i think you know just from like a historic perspective i think this movie is worth checking out just um yeah and uh i don't know if you're a fan of like like I, i remember at the time i saw this i was like really into playing skyrim so this was kind of like in my head, this is like Skyrim the movie minus the dragons. So I was I was into it, man. I love this movie. Instead of dragons, you have wolves. Foxes, 100%. foxes. Sorry. Yeah, but then there was also like weird magic shit with um with Willem Bjork. Bjork had like Bjork. a quick and Bjork little cameo at the end. She played, with this, his... she played this yeah person. Uh and the witch. And it was, it was great. Yeah, yeah, you have to see it. Um, and then the last movie that I put on my honorable mentions, um, again, because I haven't seen films like Glass Onion or um, the new Pinocchio movie that came out. Um, but we will I will get to that. We will all we will watch it, that. I promise. <laughs> I put Black Adam on, on my honorable <laughs> mentions. <laughs> um, and I want to explain myself. You have 10 yeah. minutes. Go. That's great. <laughs> I, um, again, I think I said this about, a um, or I think somebody mentioned this about another movie earlier, but when I went into Black Adam, um, I kind of had very low expectations. Like, um, I think when you see the trailers and when you, like, when you're going into the Black Adam movie, you, I mean, it's, it's another The Rock movie. It's kind of, you know, I've heard somebody describe it as, like, it's you know, it's the rock, the character is the rock with like a Black Adam skin, essentially, you know, so, which I, I think kind of is what they did with the character, but I really loved, um, especially the supporting cast of the movie, I thought um, Dr. Fate was very well realized, um, Hawkman I loved, um, even Noah Centineo's character had his, had his funny moments, um, and I just, again, like I, I had very low expectations um, and I'm also a very big DC fan, so I felt like I had an obligation to see this, whether or not I was excited about it. So I ended up um, being pleasantly surprised because it wasn't an amazing movie by any means, but it also wasn't bad. So that's what I have to say about Black Adam. I think it's worth watching. <laughs> what What's so interesting about you and that decision is that I remember every single time that I would see an ad for it and I would send it into the group chat 
that I'd just be like, I don't care about The Rock. I'm going for this for the supporting cast alone. But I'm I love me some Doctor Fate. I'm an absolute yeah. slut for Doctor Fate. Um, and yet I still have not seen this movie mainly because I feel like the kind of as the movie was like hyping up to like you know, be released, and like right after it was released, it just and so I for- completely forgot about it. I just mm-hmm. I feel so bad about that. Because I just yeah. Dr. Fate exists. Pierce Brosnan's exactly. Dr. Fate. Yeah, and nobody cares. That's the problem. Um, and I feel really bad, too, because, the, you know, I mean, there's a lot of discussion about uh, the state of DC and Warner DC. Brothers and everything right now. But, you know, The Rock has really been kind of embarrassing himself on social media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know and especially with what happened with henry cavill and i'll just say this because i think this is the only time i'm gonna like say this publicly but i so prior to seeing this movie i had met henry cavill at the restaurant that i work at um probably a week before this movie came out and um he was having dinner with i think it was his girlfriend was there and it, it was like the rest of his team and they were they were you know chatting and they were obviously celebrating something um and i and i'm sure it was something along the lines of you know him you know getting the superman gig or whatever but um or having negotiations so you know to see that be like the major selling point of the movie um and then for that to just kind of like fall completely out from under it is is sad because henry cavill really kind of just put his whole Cavusy into into that role, and now I think he might be like paying the price for it. And it and um, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of speculation right now, and I don't think anything's like set in stone. And I don't think anybody's actually fired right now. And I don't, you know. So I I think that the movie alone um is worth checking out. And I think even beyond like the Superman, um you know five second cameo that we get i i thought it was interesting that they were still um you know kind of building towards like the the greater dceu universe that they've been building towards so um you know it, it there's connective tissue in it for what it's worth i have two things to say about those two men the rock and henry cavill um because we just talked about henry cavill i just feel so bad for him because he had recently left The Witcher, which was like his prize thing, mainly because no one was listening to him on the writings that he is the one that he, he knew his shit. He read the books, he's played the games, he knows everything about yeah. it in the writer's room. Just wasn't listening to him. And I just, I feel really bad because we all know that that was a huge passion project for him. And also with, um now with soups and all of this, it just, I feel bad. Poor man's unemployed. Um, the only thing he's got a leg to stand on is Enola Holmes, and I forgot that that second movie came out. <laughs> uh, Any honorable mentions? Um, uh, honorable... Containing Enola Holmes? <laughs> no, but the second thing for The Rock, um, I am I'm I'm a little I'm just I'm proud of him because he has been campaigning for this for literally a decade, and it's finally here. And I know it it isn't it didn't get well received but i've just i'm happy for him that it, ha- it has finally happened but you know what at the same time it's his own fault exactly because he decided to make a black adam movie when he should have been the antagonist in the first shazam movie exactly and he his own ego got in his way and now he's paying the price for it so as much as you know i appreciated this movie for what it's worth i also don't feel bad for the guy so right it's I just remember- a series of missteps is yeah. what all that is because to me black adam i haven't seen it yet but i'm going to to me the black adam in this universe is like the black widow of the mcu it's like it's just too late like you took too long yeah it it could have been so much better but timing is a big chunk of what's wrong yeah so it's it's unfortunate but nothing's in stone not until we see someone fly across the screen in that suit is it officially not henry cavill anymore so we don't know for sure yet so Uh, uh, one last thing before I want to get into my own honorable mentions, um, which is remember everyone, we are all sluts for Pierce Brosnan's Dr. Fate. And Pierce Brosnan, in, but specifically his Dr. Fate. Speaking of refreshing, here are my honorable mentions. Once again, nope, the menu, 
Do Revenge, and The Invitation. All four incredibly different movies. Um, it's about the variety. Yeah. I wouldn't say I have I have any that you guys haven't already talked about. Like when I was thinking about my list, I'm like, oh yeah, nope should be on there. Everything everywhere all at once should be on there. But I was like, okay, but this is my list. This is for me. And when you know, it's fun to talk about what what do you select to make your list? I'm like, well, rewatchability is a huge factor for me. Nope is not something I'm going to watch again and again and again, especially in quick, rapid su- succession. I'm like, no, that's a once a year. And then you think. So that's how I came to my list is, well, if it makes me feel good, if it's the kind of thing I could pop in no matter what my mood and it's going to make me feel good, that's what bumped it onto the list, you know? So as we talked about at the top of the show, it's not about the Oscar baby. Anthony's not here. We no. can do whatever the <laughs> hell we want. Right. So that's why I'm all like, right. Unbearable weight of mass talent. Why? Pedro Pascal. That's all I need. Like. <laughs> that's it. That's all you need. No, I think so that's much. what's cool about this group is that we all kind of quantify like our tastes in movies in different ways. Like, I mean, as much as like I like movies that have, um, you know, a really strong script or like something good or substantial that they say, like, you know, also just, just, you know, being able to turn off your brain and just like, just having, just getting to enjoy something or just having a good time in the theater, just that experience, like really just, it really creates a perspective of the film for you. So, um, yeah. We did well, everyone. Oh yeah, very eclectic. Like I said, I was hope I was I meant to say this before we started filming. I was like, oh, I hope you guys realize that streaming movies count. You can totally include those. And Kyle did. I'm so happy. So Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And also like I think it's cool that we now have I mean, I feel like I have um uh, some movies that I want to check out now Same. based on your guys' list. Same. So totally. Yes. This is your third recommendation to go and see the menu. So many movies. No, so many movies. Just need more eyeballs. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. So, okay. Well, those are our lists as of this moment. Now, again, have not seen Avatar. Free Avatar. We will yeah. come back for that. And also anything else that's coming out because sometimes, like we've been talking about, we've been surprised by things like, oh, the invitation, what's that? Bam, and you're blown away. Like it's amazing how you you go into something thinking, oh, this is just a waste of time. And then it becomes your favorite thing. You just never know. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we will be back with our Avatar thoughts because <laughs> there is no ignoring this movie. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not looking forward to it because I don't care about Avatar, but I'm ho- I'm open to it convincing me why I should care. I also don't care, but I feel the need to rewatch the first one because I haven't done that in years. Yeah, I feel like you have to, or else you're yeah. just gonna not know. I know. Or I'll else force... it's not going to be the same experience. Yeah, I'll force that James one to Cameron go and sit down. Yes, exactly. What does James Cameron want? That's what we should yes, think Papa, of going in. Papa Jim, will yes. do. Yes, Papa Jim. We're just like Papa. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was the, you said Papa. That was the only thing. All right. We're, yeah, we're getting a little Bye. hilarious over here. All we're right. absolutely hilarious. All right. Well, we'll we'll be back later. So thank you for. Yeah listening to us chat about our favorite movies of 2022. I hope this was fun and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.